Good afternoon everybody, Todd Fuller here from Fire Disc Cookers and welcome to episode 10 of Fired Up Friday. Boy, I tell you, we got a special episode today. We're here in Maitland, Florida at Luke's Kitchen and Bar. I've got Chef Brandon back today and also our special guest, Chef Jason Campbell here. Yes, and this is his home, your yeah. home here at Luke's. Yeah, we're excited to do this today. Gonna have some fun. Gonna cook up a little uh, taste of treats for y'all today. Awesome. Good deal. So anyways, before we get started, I wanted to say, you know, thanks to everybody for watching last uh, last month's episode. We, Chef Brandon gave me the, uh, the game day chili, which was awesome. And uh, I think a lot of you have tried it and posted it. So if you have, be sure you comment below. We're going to be doing some great giveaways for everybody that comments. So be sure to do that throughout the episode. Let us know if you've cooked it the game day chili or anything you like to cook on the fire disc but today we are going to do i think this is your your recipe isn't yeah, it chef? yeah chef chef and i kind of came up with an idea you know it's kind of fall here in florida so we're going to kind of do a, a like a harvest uh hash we got some maple breakfast sausage some you know squash sweet potatoes a little sage in there to kind of tie it in together and then we're going to do a really cool uh kind of angry fried egg on top of it nice so, i can't i can't wait for that uh, that's going to be, be fun that's going to be really so when cool. I first, uh, when I first started talking to Jason about this and, and what we were doing, he kind of, light bulbs started going off in his head and he just started being such a, a brainiac of it. And, you know, he got one and he loves it. You know, he cooks out of it regularly at home. You know, so you, always on your Sunday, I know that. And so he's always coming back with, with killer stuff. So I knew he'd be an introduction into this group awesomely. Yeah, we're excited to be here for sure. Yeah. yeah, we're excited to have you, you know, be a part of the team and to yeah. be here at Luke's. And, you know, be sure to, we'll, we'll put uh, in the in the recipe on the, on the website, we'll be sure to put uh, your Instagram handle and stuff to follow you. For sure, and, and Luke's. See the, and Luke's, yeah. and we'll, uh, we'll get rolling. So, anyways, I'm gonna let you guys take over this show. And who's, what are we doing first? Well, I mean, this is an autumn, autumn hat. You coined the, coined the name, you came up with yeah, it. Yeah, kind of a harvest hash, kind of, you know, inspired by fall. So, you know, first off, you know, we want to make sure we're going to start rendering out our uh, pork sausage here, grind it in-house. Going to have a little chili flake, a little fresh fresh sage, maple syrup to sweeten it up a little bit. So get a little uh, grape seed oil in the pan here. Just a little, that pork fat is going to help us a lot. So let's go ahead and get that sausage rolling in there. Yeah, I, you know... Everybody asks, what kind of oil do you use? I love the grapeseed oil. What, what do you like to, I to use, use? Sometimes I use peanut oil because I like to have that around the house, especially when, you know, the uh, turkey frying season. So, sure. you know, that's a high temp oil. You definitely want to use that in this, especially if we're cooking in the center of that. So, you know, what we're going to do here is we're going to get that sausage kind of getting brown on one side, kind of, you know, use that nice little spade there and help flatten it all out. We're kind of going to create layers of flavor here. Okay. You know, that pork sausage is going to leach out some of its, its nice, beautiful fat. And then once that gets nice and cooked and uh, crispy, you know, kind of the classic, we're going to move, start moving things out to the side and just create that kind of hash once we kind of go through here. Um, and you have to make your own sausage in this one, you know. You can buy do any, any grocery store yeah, loose right. sausage. It can easily be done that way. Right. So, I mean, Jay, Jay may get the recipe for his, but, you know, this is just... Uh, Something that we can easily be tracking sure. for the home user and the, the easy casual user. Yeah, you, you know, and, and in case also, so in case anybody doesn't know out there, if we mess up at all, Jay's got his kitchen right behind. Yeah, so we can have a make up for yeah, him. We, we, and, we got and, all the goodies so, here. Yeah. And, and we're in real time right now. That's so, right. You know. this, this is a really good spot to do this, just uh -huh. in case, right? Yeah, if you forget case. something. You know, or when I do it at home, it's a, oh, nope. that's right. Go yeah, bark. Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. A little bit more heat on that. Yeah, you know, and it's kind of. You know, pork sausage, you can definitely at home make that if you got a small little grinder. It's just pork shoulder. Pork shoulder usually has enough fat on it to where you don't have to worry about buying extra fat. You know, you just grind it and it's, you know, kind of mix it with a wooden spoon in a bowl. You can have a simple, quick sausage at home. Right. You don't need all the fancy equipment, especially for a loose sausage like this. You know, you could even do wild boar. You could do duck, chicken, you know. Any kind of sausage. If you're a hunter right, right. and you got something that has a little bit of fat in it or you can do a pork and duck sausage, you know, you can have fun with it. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of hunters are in the group and stuff yeah, and, and yeah. utilizing the, the fire disc organization. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, I, I think it's, a, it's a huge network of them that, that use it and they take this out in the field. Yeah. I mean, I know you like to do it. I've taken yeah. it down to the Everglades and cooked yeah. on the, the chickies down there, um, then fried fish down there. But, but it's like taking this in the field is one of the best, right. best things out there. I think one of the, 
one of the things too that we could do in future episodes is is do some wild game. You know, do some venison, yeah. venison sausage. That means or, you have to take us out of here and hunt it. That's, that's right. right. That's yeah. right. Somebody. We well, maybe. Maybe shoot something. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. Have a little fun with it, you know. Yeah. We got to get out in the field and do it too. So we kind of see we're getting a little good browning here, but we'll kind of let it roll because you want you want some texture in this dish, you know, like. I just there you go. Starting to get a little yeah, color. Yeah. So we'll leave it alone, yeah, Jay? Is yeah. that what you do? Yeah, I think we're good there. You know, the you know, best thing about hash is kind of, you know, you can kind of use whatever you guys have before you're taken out to go out in the woods or whatever. It's, you got you got beets. You got roasted beets. That works well. You, don't, you know, we got shishitos today because they're going to be kind of fun. Yes. Yeah, I like yeah. to leave the stem on them because that way you can pull them out and eat them individual if yeah. you like. You know, you can use poblano chilies. You could use hash chilies depending on what region you're in because, uh, you know, there's that big... Uh, Hatch green chili battle versus New Mexican green chili battle. I figured that out when I lived in uh, Oklahoma City for a while. Right. The only thing you don't want to use is a chili up. that's way too spicy. You don't want to use. Yeah, it'll uh, overpower. And, and it, you if you know? use a jalapeno, take the seeds out or something like yep. that, and then maybe introduce a couple seeds in there. Yeah. Stuff like that, but it did get that jalapeno flavor. Yeah. Where where other, and then you can actually introduce a, another heat, another one. Yeah, hash is a very versatile dish. You can you can have fun with it. You can make it your own. And uh, you know, start playing with ingredients, and then you'll eventually develop your favorite one. And you know, right. hopefully, you get known for. You go out there with your friends, like, dude, you gotta make your hash. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. That's the goal, right? That's right. I, you know? I don't think I've ever. I mean, one of my favorite breakfasts is corned beef hash, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, Why I not? love it. And yep. we should probably do that sometime too. But I've never. I don't think I've, I've never made hash before, so I'm super excited. Well, we to do. See we have it. to make our own corned beef. Yeah. So we gotta be uh, two no, weeks no, out. That's, you know, yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's the fun part. And it's not a hard thing to do. It's just oh really? The longest thing is making the corned beef. It's got to sit in a brine for a couple weeks, and then you go from there. Yeah, Everything really. else is potatoes and onions. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So we're, we're trying to get a nice little that. nice little browning. I'm, I'm going to... things like we got. We probably flip it up. So you want to flip it completely? Yeah. I'm going to let Jay tell me what to do here. <laughs> oh, wow. We do got a good amount. Oh, that's, that's not bad. That's good. Uh, that's good. Good layer of flavor there. You need two. You want to yeah, do, do, the, nice, do the double chop. You gotta have extra tools sometimes, you know? Right. Get your kit. You can kind of see we're starting to get some like nice little tasty bits that are uh, sticking to the pan there. That's never, never a bad never thing. Never a bad thing. Because once we start adding our vegetables and stuff, it's gonna help release and bring that flavor back into the dish. Got it. And your idea here is to brown this side really good and then flip it and get it like probably three quarters of the way cooked and then move it up to the side. Is that what your idea is? Yeah, because, okay. you know... Because up here, there's still It's still going to lightly cook through. You know, we don't want to... You know, we you don't want to hammer it. That's exactly. That's the chef's term is hammer it. Hammer it. That's never a good thing. So what exactly does that mean? It almost overcooked, you uh, know. You, ever, you, ever, you, ever, you ever take it in your thumb and put it on a board and put it... <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you hammer something, sometimes you cook the life out of it, and that's not good. Got we want to keep the integrity of the sausage here. So, you know, cooking it about three quarters and then moving it out to the side going to lightly cook through those nice juices right. are going to stay inside that sausage and that's right. that's what's kind of important okay, we're getting good here bro yeah i think we probably about another minute yeah another Just, minute we can we can start to move it up yeah i think you want me to break it up a yeah, little bit let's too? break it up a little bit more that way get a little more throughout the dish i've always wanted to do that yeah there you go <laughs> <laughs> well you know that dreams are happening right here he's always wanted yeah. to do it <laughs> <laughs> so really that's one of the great things uh Chef Jason about the fire disc is, and, and I think when I when I introduced it to Chef Brandon at first, he's like, "Man, this is amazing because it's like what we do at the restaurant, right? So the stage cooking, you get you have a hot surface in the middle, yep. do all your cooking, and then then let it, uh, you know, push it out to the side to stay warm and continue to cook, but yeah, allow the the juices and the flavor to come to the middle and and yeah, kind of infuse re right? infuses it stuff down. It's kind of nice." You know, being able to get things out to the side, you don't necessarily have to take everything out of the pan and then, you know, try and like worry about workspace, like your workspace inside the pan. You right. know, and that's what's uh, pretty crucial on this is we're gonna have everything come back in together and it'll, once we get everything kind of cooking, it's gonna come together really fast. Yeah. Yeah, that's looking pretty good there. Yeah. Go we'll ahead and... Awesome, I'm loving it. Here, you want me to start moving it up? And yeah, uh, let's, let's move it out to the sides okay. and get them both. So what we're going to do here is going to kind of cook our ingredients by cooking time a little bit. So we have our two hard squashes, or one hard squash, our butternut squash, and we have two potatoes. Yeah, those are going to take the longest to cook, so we're going to want to get those going first, and then right. we'll add the items that are kind of like a quick cook, like the Cheetos and the onions. Because right. we, we want to keep some of the life of the vegetables, too. We don't want to hammer the vegetables, either, right. like we were talking about. Right. So well, Jay, think, Jason beautifully did. He did uh, two kinds of squash. He's got a butternut and a sweet potato. Is yes, that sir. Butternut. 
Yep. So I mean, a little bit more fat. Now. A little more okay? fat. Yeah, it's never going to okay? hurt it, you know? Yep. <laughs> I think once we start uh, getting the, um, the sweet potatoes and the butternut, we'll probably start cutting those onions. That way they'll be ready to go at the end. On this one. Okay. Man, I'm like I'm liking this this episode. Yeah, I'm just yeah, kind of yeah. watching, learning, yeah. just like you guys are. Usually, I'm right in there, but uh, oh, this is a pretty good deal. Oh yeah. yeah. Just like any cooking, want to develop some layers of flavor. So, you know, we didn't season the sausage too much because that's kind of uh, from the get go. You want to season that sausage to help right get it flavored out. So we're gonna have those guys going a little bit. They added a little salt here. Yeah, just a little bit of uh, kosher salt there. Um, again, you know, we're gonna keep building and having layers of flavor going on, so we don't want to season too much. You know, we're gonna, you know, make sure we taste along the way, and then, you know, right at that final moment, say, yeah, this is good to go, and then we'll, we'll do that fun little egg there, you know. Okay. All right. So what's what's next? So we've got um, we got the what's the squash in here now? Yeah, we got squash and sweet potatoes going, cooking in that nice little. Uh, Beautiful uh, sausage fat there. I think we need to get some uh, I, uh, onion sliced here. Okay. Um, you want to do that? Kind of just quick julienne on those. You know, I always say in cooking that there's two things that affect cooking: it's time and temperature. Right now, this is just about time, and then yep. the heat do its thing. Right. So I mean, this is a great time for uh, while we do this. If uh, you want to get on to what, uh, all that other stuff that you love to talk about, Let me move. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so we're at using a little red onions, just a nice little color pop in there as well. So, um, I like I like this onions because it's got a little bit more of a onion bite on it. Sometimes you know, not as sweet as a, as a white onion, yeah. but it's got a right. You know that. So for people that you know maybe join in the first time, Chef Brandon, I know you you, you always give little knife tip, you know, cutting tips mm -hmm. here. Why don't you? Talk about the onion. I mean, you shared that before with us. Kind of how to cut an onion. Uh, the first thing I like to ways. do, I like to get it peeled, and I don't like to fry when I do it. That's step one. Uh, that's, 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 step one. That's step one. Step two is I always kind of I work right uh, left to right, so I get everything over that way. So I get everything that I'm about to chop going that way. And then what I like to do, position myself. My hand's gonna be here. My thing's gonna be there. And I like to take my knife put my blade and my knife right there and I work this way. Got so my, my instead of having my fingers displayed out like that, my fingers always touch like that. So, and then like anything with some practice you get to do that. And if you start with a nice flat base, then you get right here, and right when your onion starts to get tippy, you tip your onion that way. Come back through. Come back on the other side. It's more it's more than halfway through, then you tip it. It's like more it's more like two thirds of the way three quarters of the way yeah. and then you tip it but once it starts to get that that tip and then you just get you know you get used you know cooking for so long you start to get used to that cold steel running up against your uh, right your knuckles there and you know it's it's important that's how you get those really nice consistent cuts too getting a good close-up on that jimmy cold steel i like that yeah cold steel oh from the Going in hard, you know. Yeah. So maybe slow down just a little bit. So. <laughs> you good? All right. Yeah, so we just want to make sure we move these uh, vegetables around a little bit. We want to get some color on them. We also don't want to cook them too much because right. we still got some layers of flavor going here. So I'm probably going to start moving these out. I think but we're going to. But if you did actually overcook them, it's kind of like a, you know when you have corned beef hash, sometimes the potatoes yeah. start to peel away, and so it's not know, a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. That was my intention, Chef. Heard that. <laughs> we, we, like to, we like to banter and chef it. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. So. Right. Gotta have fun. So I think what we're gonna do next, we're gonna add our Brussels here. Brussels yeah. next? Yep. They're, right. gonna, they're gonna go a little Man, poppy those, pop. They're those, big, too. That's, uh, we're in season, you know? Yeah. So yeah. This is really nice and fall. You know? Be careful, they do pop, so. And then we're gonna, I, I'm gonna actually add a little touch of seasoning. Yep. Eat. So you're. Add a little salt. A little salt. You know, if, you uh, if you wanted to add one of the seasonings over here, you can. I just I was gonna let Jay season it up the way he liked it. Yeah. I know he had he had a preferred. He went through all the seasonings. Uh, yeah. Past couple days. I think the what you picked the bodacious beef, right? I did. Yeah, it's got some hearty black pepper in there. I think it's gonna go great with our vegetables and our sausage. So if you want to have fun, you know, you can take the time to flip them all on one side. You get like a nice little kind of pretty sear on them. Yeah. But you know, you don't necessarily have to. 
Yeah, like this that. this is looking fall color yeah. kind of palette yeah, going on here, nice isn't it? it? It's awesome. So those kind of go, then we're gonna... It's gonna take about four minutes, five minutes, yeah? Four yeah. Four or five minutes, yeah. okay, awesome. And as we're doing this, you know, the great thing about the sausage, as it's still cooking, it's still layer, yeah. layering its fat down into yeah. it and just going down there and really helping everything yeah. come come together. Yeah, and for those of you that really, this is the first time you've ever watched Fired Up Friday or maybe you've never used a, a fire disc, you know, we, it is a, uh, a propane flame cooker and the yep. flame is centered, is in the center, so that's the hottest point. And then as you move out, and we've got the digital thermometer, and yeah. you know you can okay. you can really see what the temperatures, you know, are from the center yeah. all the way out. So it's got a cool little laser beam you can point wherever you like. Right. You know, we're rolling around 200 on that, which is a good kind of, you know, we're not super ripping because we want to have a little bit of control of what we're doing. Right. So these little. Thermometers here are great if you're especially cooking outdoors. You're frying without a, a thermometer on, on some uh, flame. These are nice and safe. And well, in the world cool nowadays, gym. of where we're living, <laughs> any, any place you go, they're actually putting one at your forehead or your wrist. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. You your put, you I don't so know if that was like certified. Not like we 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 invent them as cooks, no. you know. But they were there for a reason. I, you know. I honestly use those when I go fishing. When I go for, for tarpon, I'm looking for that water temperature there you go. and that water that's, column. That's right. And I, I, I'll, I'll find that. They're fun. That 72 degrees water and above in early spring. <laughs> yeah, that's and, that's and, a perfect temp. You know, and that, that way you know they're going to be crawling along the you know sub surface yeah. somewhere. Yeah, so like that. Yeah, yeah, you're good. No, I was just going to say that uh, you know be sure we said before we're going to do a bunch of giveaways uh, today. So make sure you comment below. You know, if, if you have a cooker, what you're cooking, oh, nice what your favorite yeah. dish is, and um, yeah, so we'll be giving away some cool, cool nice. swag. That's so, exciting. Yep. Giveaways are awesome. So yeah, you can see we're getting some color on the Brussels sprouts here. Yeah. yeah, it looks good. You know, and what's great about this is you're gonna have some different textures and flavors going on. You got that crispy sausage, and then you know you're gonna have some of those sweet potatoes and squash that do get a little soft. But that's gonna add a nice little like kind of creaminess, fattiness back into I, it. I hate I hate to say it, but you know I. I think we're just gonna add it, but you know, in cooking you have to adjust. I think we need a little yeah. bit more fat in there. You can hear it's a little quiet. Yeah, you can hear yeah. it. You know, and you can almost. You want to hear like a crackle? It's like a uh, you listen to these sounds. Action, yeah. 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 You know. There we go. Cooks and chef, we we rely a ton on sounds when we're cooking. Yeah. You, know, you can tell when something's getting nice and crispy or rendering, or it just wasn't hot enough. Right. You know, right. And, and that's how we react off of that. You know, that you, you could hear that that pan wasn't having a lot of action going on, so we got to right. add a little more fat to it. And, right. It'll be great. It's gonna be great. Yeah, you know, a good chef walks into the room and he can sit there and, and all of a sudden walk in the kitchen and be like, "What's burning?" Yeah. And all of a sudden somebody's taking a piece of bread, one piece too far, <laughs> too far. Yeah. and they're just like, and they can pick it up across the room. Yeah. You know? Oh, well, yeah. You know, That's it's awesome. It's 360 in the kitchen. You know, yeah. about our, our work, work <laughs> hear, sound, and sight. You know, and, then, and it's. That's why I love this thing because it takes me into the outdoors. Yeah. And right. it gets me out and like the, the, my senses that are coming around. You know, they're surrounding, even though we got 1792 over there, right. which is, you know, the 418 highway right. going through. I feel still like we're outdoors and we're having a, having a kick ass time. Yeah, we got yeah. a great patio out here. You got these beautiful oak trees that provide a ton of shade. So it's kind of like you're out, you know, you're out a little away from things. Right. Okay, t tell us uh, real quick what, what your philosophy here is at Loops and, you know, I, I know. Yeah, you know, the, the mindset here is, you know, you know we're, we're an American style restaurant. You know, that's influences from everywhere. But the heart of our kitchen is we have a really amazing uh, wood fire grill here. Uh, you know, we use uh, Florida oak. You know, we try to solely have a lot of our dishes come off of that or have it a, a flavor profile that we use. We have a little, kind of, we call it the smoke box above, right. where all the kind of like a mini kind of smoker oven at the same time. It's just the flavors you get off of this thing, you're like, you can't, you know, you can't beat it. Right. You know, a lot of people are like, man, those fish collars that we do, Kind of, we make our own blackening season in house, and we char them on that wood fire grill. And there's people that's like, these are so good. I've had collars before. You know, they're like, how are you? Why is this so good? And I always just kind of go back. I was like, you know, it's that wood fire grill, and right. our cooks do a great job of fulfilling the uh, kind of vision that we have here. Right. Okay, so next time you're on, I, I want you to do a version of the fish collar. I'll get the fish collar. So we we both know that fishermen throw away. Yeah. Pretty much it's the best part yep. of the fish. No kidding. And it's. It's insane. Wait till you see it, brother. Well, uh, I'm gonna make you a believer. Yeah, fish um, collars are they're amazing. You know, you the alignment. Japanese yeah. love it, and they kind of turn us, us Ameri right. you know, Westerners onto it. And Jay's version of it, it's just on the menu nightly. Yeah, you have really. a, And it changes 
you know, you change it up about once a month, right? Yeah, we'll so. just kind of change the sets, you know, and just, you know, kind of go with the season, see where we're at on it. Right. And, you know, a lot of times the fish collars change. If we got redfish in, we're going to have redfish collars. If we got right. a snapper, you yeah. have a snapper. So I'm starting to feel pretty decent yeah. about these these brussels. I think they're they're um, good there. I, think we I can do think we need to touch more fat again, but <laughs> yeah. it's okay. Soaking it up, soaking yeah. it up. And you'll see once we get done with this, you're yeah, not going to see oil leaching everywhere. Yeah. You're not gonna yeah. Oh, this this fat. is also enough for eight people. Yeah. So yeah. this is a very minuscule yeah. amount, and you know, this is this is not. Yeah, we could probably come in with our shishitos here. Okay. And probably the onions at the same time. You know, get okay. a little fun action going. Um, Man, that's looking good. Yeah, yeah. Mm. that fawn. Yeah, that's, that's the good the... part right there. Those onions, I think we hit the onions first. Because when they hit, they're going to kind of caramelize, want... but they're also going to release their moisture into you the pan. Onion right. first, Chef, is what you want? Yeah, I think so. And then we'll let them sit for a second. Okay, and they'll kind of steam out everything, Yeah, right? and that's what we want. Because you, you kind of hear, you know, the fancy guys use the word deglaze. Right. Right. And that just means, means when we have oh, something yeah. sticky to the bottom of the pan and good flavors that's not quite burnt, we're going to come in with a liquid. Or, or we're going to use the natural uh, moisture from these onions. Got you it. can hear them, they kind of drop the pan, uh, yep. the heat down, yep. and they're going to steam and leach some of their, their juice down in there. And then we're going to come back and we're going to scrape that up, move those out to the side, come in with the Cheetos, and we're probably going to get pretty close to finishing this up to doing our egg rig. Angry egg. Oh. I, lo I love cooking with this guy. You know? <laughs> yeah, every time I cook with him, I learn something new. And, well, I want to yeah, tell even, you. Even as I've been around the block a lot, you know, and that's one thing we always look for is this. The Jimmy, are you, are you getting a good shot of this this uh, the disc here? Holy cow! I use my and fingers. This, I'm and sorry. The smell, <laughs> the smell that is coming off this is amazing. You know, onions, man. You know, I tell you. Ah, oh, they are the base of everything. They're the base Ooh. of everything. Garlic too. Garlic, garlic, too. garlic. garlic. Yeah, yeah. You could add garlic in you here add, if you want. You have it in the sausage, right, Craig? Yeah, there's garlic in the sausage, so we kind of have some of those hidden flavor profiles that people are like, man, what is that? You know. But it's I mean? also supposed to be a breakfast dish. You, know, you don't want yeah. to go throughout your whole day yeah. keeping all, all, all your uh, friends away. Yeah, you, have like you want your right. enemies to stay on the other side of yeah. the, the lake, but not. But yeah, you can kind of see, see the steam coming up yeah. here. Oh, yeah. And that's actually helping finish yeah. all the vegetables out nice and Yeah, easily. so you can see, we just come through now, and that's going to help bring up all those tasty bits on the bottom of the pan. Yep. A lot of people will just leave that there. Nah, man. Nah, no, no, get it. You know, let these vegetables help create some flavor in there, and also help clean up the pan so you don't have you so go. much at the end. <laughs> it's not burnt flavor, you know. So now we're kind of getting those in there. We're kind of sweating these guys. You know, we got a lot of caramelization going on already from the sausage and the, uh, right. the Brussels sprouts. And we're still so going to cook this these. for about another five minutes. Yeah. We don't and really then. want them to caramelize out too far because then, then we'll have one note, you know. Right, right. That's awesome. This is looking great, Jack. Man, looking good. Good, I, good, I, good. I, I, you, Jimmy, you able to come in on this and, <laughs> whoo, you know? Oh, man, this is, this is, yeah. I mean, you see all, all the, the layers of, of just color and beautiful. And I feel autumn. I mean, it is, what, like 80 degrees here? Yeah, that's yeah. We're going to have a it's temperature cool. drop here it's this cool. week. It's cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's going down to what, 78? Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. and everybody else out there, I share oh, in the North man. Country, it's it's getting cold, They're snow. Not happy. Yeah, it's it's yeah, uh, I, it's I, definitely fall. I dealt with that, and I don't want to deal with that ever again. <laughs> Todd and I did one in June, and I, I swear, swear I could feel all the people watching, sweating, watching us outside. Oh, yeah. you, know, you know, people in Minnesota were like, "Oh, geez, they're so hot." <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> not by heat, you know, but you're dripping, you know. Yeah. Exactly. They were probably pretty good. You know, you can smell those onions too. Yeah, right? I can really, really smell the onions. Get these guys up in there. Oh, that's looking great, Jeff. Yeah. Now, shishitos, sometimes they're so nice, you actually, you know, we're going to let, I think we're going to let the uh, fire disc here get a little actual flavor on them. So we're going to pretty cranked up. Hot a little just, bit more. Just a little bit so we can kind of blister those up. Blister is another term, you know. Blister is if you'll see these peppers yeah. when they go down. You're going to get a little char and then it's going to look like a little blister. And yeah. some of these peppers have some, uh, you, you get that creepy crawly on you, another Halloween term. You get yeah. that one that's going to sneak up on you and go, wow, that was hot. Yeah, right, and then right. most of them are usually mild. Yeah, they're pre pretty, pretty. So what kind of peppers are these? So these are shishito peppers. Uh, shishito peppers. You know, we yeah, use the stem these. and all, it's great. Yeah, the stem is nice because you can pick them out. Um, we actually have a version of this right now that we, we sear in a cast iron pan and we actually roast them in our smoke box there. And that's a little fall inspired too. We have uh, we serve them with some pomegranate seeds and like a little kind of pumpkin romesco. Um, very nice dish, a little fresh sage in there as well. Um, you know, that's kind of that fall right. inspired. Right. So you kind of hear them crackling a little bit. Yep. And now you see this here. Woo! Let's see if we can find a, a sawmill in there. 
There's one guy yellow, right there. Little that's blister. Little blister. Yeah, yeah, so yeah you can blister. hear it popping. Yeah. Yep. And that pop is that skin and the, uh, the moisture and, and, and the flesh yeah. kind of popping away from each other. Got it. And, yeah. And Every few uh, shishitos will have a little bit of a, what they like to say, bite to them. And it'll right. catch you by surprise. You know, you'll see some people uh, when you're eating shishitos, they're like having a good time and then they're like, <laughs> uh, get you. One, one get you. you. Know? Yeah. The biter, the, the, the creepy crawling. Yeah, the one that's like, <laughs> here I am. You got it, thank you. Yeah, a little, little salt here. And, and, and notice how he's, we like to season in layers, Todd. Yep. So everything gets this, just a little bit of salt. And then as it cooks, it generally, and it's a very finished product, we're not sitting there saying, hey, what does it need? Does it need salt? It may need a touch of salt, but it's not going to need a ton of salt. Right. But all the, also, what allows the natural flavors to do of everything and the natural sugar to actually creep out and, curl, and and actually make a dish. If you started a dish without salt, 100% and cooked it, and started a dish side by side comparison, right. one done with salt, they're completely two different animals, and you're gonna notice huh. that the dish over yeah. here on the right is gonna be so much better than yep. the one that was started without salt and finished with salt at the complete end. Cool. It's, 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 yeah, yeah it's, it's, awesome. it's definitely a, a cooking, you know, method Season and layers. Way. layers. Yeah. Season yeah. and layers, you know. And you know, it sounds weird, but food has pores, right? Squash has pores, those Brussels sprouts has pores. So when we heat them up and the steam happens, those pores open up. That's our chance to right. get some salt into those guys. Right. So once it, and then they're gonna suck that salt in. Then that's why we, we're gonna make sure that you taste that sweet potato by itself, it's seasoned. You taste that shishito, it's seasoned. Right. And you just don't want one component of your dish to be seasoned because then it's gonna run flat. Got it. You sure. know, so those right. are the kind of... I'm gonna start to flip a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I think we're probably looking pretty See, good. See, now there's yeah, a blister. That's, a, blister that's right a blistered one right yeah. there, really nice. Yeah. You know, and then, then when you get, if you get like half of one of those done, you hear that little, little squeak. Yeah. Yep. You know? Um, nice vibe. They're, 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 there. Usually they're about 50% done at this stage when, yep. they're, when, they're, when you start to see one get like that. Because they're right. actually steaming from the inside also. Got it. So. Yep, so I think as we're rolling, we maybe cut up some of that stage. And I think we can probably start rolling into getting our Okay. Uh, our can I start bringing so everything together? I think so. Let's yeah. mix it up. Mix it up? Yeah, and All then, right. Awesome. Well, I yeah, hope you man. guys are enjoying this this episode so far. Man, I've learned a ton from you guys. Yeah, we're having some fun here. Absolutely. And make sure, if you haven't joined our Facebook uh, group, are you on the Facebook yes, group? Sir, yeah. yeah, so I, you guys are doing some amazing things, but make sure you go to the Facebook group. And the other thing we got going on too, we are so close to having 100,000 followers oh, that's amazing. on Facebook. So if you know anybody that hasn't joined our, you know, our, yeah, our Facebook there, uh, yeah. channel, give us a like, give us a follow. As soon as we hit 100,000, we're giving a bunch of free stuff away. Uh, so a free cooker and all kinds goal, of right? stuff. That's right. You know, go a little temptation to get up there. So, that's right. So right. please, uh, you know, everybody share it and let's uh, let's get to 100,000. Sounds good. So I think we're pretty much there. I think we dropped the heat down to low. Okay. Kind of let it ride out. And there's that steep out. And yep. Shit, this is incredible. And then you're going to probably taste it for seasoning and add your bodacious as you want it. Yeah, we're going to add that at the end because... You know, it does have some chunkier things in here, and I like when I have a spice like that. I yeah. kind of like to add it towards the end because some of those things might possibly burn in there. Right. So we want to make sure, you know, I give you a nice, you know, we don't really want that bitter flavor. So I think finishing the dish with this right. is going to be great. So let's awesome. maybe finish up some of that sage. You can either chop it yeah, yeah, or. Yeah, okay. You want to give it a taste real quick? And then... Yeah. You want this nice and tight? So on chopping herbs on another demo, real quick, I'm going to take them all and roll them up nice and tight like you would a tobacco cigarette, and you're going to pack it. Got it. And then I just roll it and I do the same method and it comes out nice and fine. You can do this with parsley, basil, anything like that. Man, and, then I it, that and, then I, and then I turn it yep. and I turn it this way. Yeah. Basically turn it quarter clock and I come back the other way and go off. Instead of doing a rock the knife motion and constantly over it right. and killing the herbs because I want to, you know, I know one thing that Jay and I both love together is we don't want to kill our herbs, we want them to be our friends and, and in the end, but if we just constantly rock the knife over them, yeah. we're going to take great. out so much of the oil. Yeah. You know, you also want to make... just do one time like yeah. that, but that's, Even distribution. that's great right there. Yeah. You know, that's, yeah. that's just fine and that was just two times right there. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, you, you can also see on that cutting board, possibly, there's not a lot of like moisture on there. That mm -hmm. means we had a decently sharp knife. If you have a, a dull knife, you can bruise those herbs. And really? a lot of times, they're going to leach all their flavor on the cutting board before they even get into the dish. Really? You know, mm -hmm. so you can feel that kind of 
that sage aroma coming up. And oh, I think yeah. now's a good time that we can use our little uh, the bodacious beef. Right. Did you give it a taste? I did. I think it needed a little more seasoning, okay, but this has ahead. some salt. So then we're going to kind of, mind if I pull the lid off no, and go, go a little. Go for it. You know? There you go. Yeah, go big or go you home, know, bro. always season high, too. You know, That way you get even distribution. So I think that's another tip I didn't know. Yeah, oh, yeah. season you, high. You season here. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's you like rain. It clouds up in the sky when the right. rain, instead of it coming down, you might hit the whole parking lot, not just the, the, the <laughs> right. parking spot. Right. Gonna get this ready to go here. All right, gonna fire up the other. Yeah. The dish. Yeah, this is looking good. This is looking good. So look at that, all those nice, beautiful colors in there. You got that kind of herba herba herbaceousness from the sage. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I think we're about ready to have a little fun with this uh, angry oh, egg. Oh man, huh? I'm so excited! Now yeah. I gotta take some water before you do this. <laughs> yeah. So you so know, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say one thing. I hope everybody uh, had a chance also with uh, Chef Taylor Sanders yesterday with uh, Fire Fire Disc University. So we've got that going on. Love to have you guys, you know, join that sometime yeah. too. Fire Disc University. Yeah, that'd be so, pretty fun. I'd be down with that for sure. Yeah. So hope yeah. you guys see that. It's on Instagram Live. And uh, you can go check that out, but uh, man, I, I just, just, I think that's one of the best things is really giving everybody, you know, the, the tips, the recipes, and really how to be successful, you know, cooking on a fire disc because it is, it is an amazing, is an amazing tool. Yeah, it's for versatile sure. for sure, you know, with some new products coming out. Uh, pretty exciting to see the evolution of it as yeah. well, you know, because we learn as we go as right. cooks and chefs. You know, we 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 have the opportunity to learn every day. And I think, you know, listening to your buyers and their feedback, you guys have done a really great job. With yeah, that. and speaking of the new products, we've got the new steaming grate, yeah. which is, I We're can't wait. about that. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. the next episode, we'll, we'll do the steaming grate. We've got the lid, of course, that's yep. coming out. Um, we've got the, uh, well, I think I showed the fork last time, but the, uh, we've got the, the, the flipping weapon here, which is awesome for steaks. Can't yeah. wait to try that out, too. So, yeah. And, uh, we'll be, There'll be more more stuff coming down the pipe as well. As soon as Jay so starts right. getting these going, I think we're just about I'll, there. Uh, I'll start to plate this up so we can go really quick and, and then we're yeah. going. All right, so what? So here's we've been waiting for this for I don't know a couple <laughs> of weeks, oh, man. right? Pressure's on, huh? The yeah. angry egg. Yeah. So talk talk about this. Talk about the history. I never heard about the angry so egg before. It's also it's sometimes called a basted egg or angry egg. Like in, in uh, Spain, a lot of times they get a kind of a what looks like a wok, so we're very similar here and they'll get you know a really nice high-end kind of grapeseed oil um, and then they'll actually just drop the egg right into the oil and it just starts going crazy right. angry egg or basted egg because you'll see once i drop it i'll start kind of basing some oil over the top okay so we got the oil around 350 which is going to be good um, you know as we go temperature may drop a little bit so we'll keep an eye on it but we got that nice little trusty thermometer all right um, with this we do want to make sure we're going to see eggs before we drop them in here and I'm using this little container to make sure that I'm just not cracking the shell and the oil is going to go nuts right so nice and here easy. we go you're going to see you get a little action see it kind of oh yeah there. and then we want to go a little bit at a time you know you can use this and kind of base them up a little bit you kind of see that kind of funness that comes over the top so we're oh, still yeah. going to have a fun runny nice yolk it's going to kind of float you want to pull those whites over the top of itself here's the man dude you know, it's kind of fun, a little different. And now he's not cracking the egg directly in there too. Right, yeah, right. Now that's a very, it's one of the safety hazards that we discussed when we were talking yep. about it. Right, so this guy's he's gonna want to stick, so we got that, set him free. He here. wants to be with his brother. Yeah. <laughs> so go in here, kind of keep them away from each other as much as you can. And depending on that's how cool. hot you got your oil, you may be able to stay away from those, uh, you know, brown edges that some chefs don't like to have. Right. But I don't mind them. I don't mind. It's a pleasure, yeah, I, you know? I, think, I think it's more of a... It's a uh, technique uh, thing, uh, uh, you know, so... A French thing. Yeah, we would get yelled at back in the day for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, that's the nice thing. We can do whatever we want. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, we're cool. going to switch Wow, that's, that's really cool. Yeah, it's just a fun little way. Then we got our little perforated guy here, which I think is great. So I got, I got that right there for him. I think our first one's going to be ready. Kind of come under it. You know, don't Capture break, it with the frying weapon. Don't break the yolk. Don't break the yolk, right? Wow. Look at that. that. And then we do kind of have this little cluster here, but I think we're going to use this to our advantage. We're going to be able to pick it up at one fell swoop. <laughs> yeah. so well, if you're cooking this. for a bunch of people and stuff yeah. like that, they could start their line right here, come up here, right. and then stand over there. And then yeah, once you the, the, do the egg uh, out of minute, some would say. So you 
gotta be careful. You wanna separate them, separate them. I'm gonna take our pan right here. So you can see how it like fluffs up. Oh, right? wow, that's, you know? That's just right. fun, man. Yeah. It's fun. It's just a little different, you know? Like I said, you wanna separate. You see that yolk, you got a little yellow, a little yep. kind of cook on them, but I guarantee you, it's still gonna have a little bit of a nice runny flavor. Awesome. I do think we can tie back in our little bit of bodacious, bodacious here. Oh, yeah, bro. The worst thing is an unseasoned egg, in my opinion. You notice how people are always, you know, going to, to get, I need hot sauce or something like that, and yeah, then they're, they're right. kind of always adjusting their eggs. Yeah, so now we have those eggs there. Chef, you could do the honors. Yeah, so I think what we can do here is maybe use our trusty little scoop so gripping weapons. Here. Just kind of lay these eggs over the top. And what we have um, is a is a baby mustard green or a nice little mustard green. Uh -huh. It's gonna freshen this up a little bit. Kind of this Man, lightly you see that good, Jimmy? That good? Man, that looks garnish that right awesome. over the top. It's got a little spice on it. Yeah, it's got a little peppery heat, um, which I think is a nice little flavor profile that we can have. And then you know after that, Man, I believe we're just it. about tasting serving time. Woo! I can't wait. Back Right, Have a breakfast wait. beer if you're down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is almost like uh, this is breakfast for dinner here. Yes, sir. For sure. Wow, look at that. That's you amazing. You hold that real quick for me? Yes, sir. Get that egg up on top for you. Oops, thanks. No, you're good. Look, oh man. And then you crack that egg. Yeah. There you go. I put that one down. Mm -hmm. Got that. All right. Man, I say we all dig in it. Get what we wanted this morning, breakfast. There we go. Way to start a good day, right? Yeah. There we go. All right. Time to move this guy here. Man, I tell you, autumn hash. Woo! This is looking good. Well, as we get get ready to taste this, right? Yeah. I just wanted to let everybody know that tomorrow is the last day of our Red October sale. Still get 15% off and free shipping site wide. Oh, nice. So uh, make sure you take advantage of that. And um, man, yeah, go over and watch uh, Fire Disc University. We're going to have this recipe up soon on the website. So man, yeah. Chef Jason, Excited. I can't, you know, thank you enough. This is this has been amazing. Uh, I appreciate support. being on the show. What do you want about the uh, where, flagship store? You talking where, about where's, that? Where's my, well, yeah, we're going to talk about uh, that. Eating oh, might man. be more important right now, huh? I, I think I'm going to talk about so this I think first. We need to break that egg. Oh, yeah. the egg first? Yep. Oh. All right, you gotta learn how to eat it too. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Oh, it's got runniness. Look at that, man. Look at it. Yeah, you kind of mix that in. That's gonna coat it. Yeah, that's awesome. It's delicious. Oh, yeah. With that, you kind of gotta work fast. Right on, bro. Hmm. There we go. Nice that, layered, seasoned. You know, it is awesome. Hmm. So good. That Healthy means, in a way too. Yeah, there's not. I mean, you know, sweet potatoes vegetables. are awesome. Brussels sprouts. The pepper, mm -hmm. squash, yeah. sausage is great for you. Yeah, you know you're putting a little salad over the top of the greens, right? Right, right, <laughs> right. No, that's awesome. Well, everybody, yeah. I, again, I can't thank you enough, Chef Jason, Chef Brandon, for yeah. having us here Thanks today at us. Luke's. And but I think I think I talked about the big announcement, and probably everybody's seen it already. But this Sunday, November first, we are opening our first flagship store in Katy, Texas, and we're so excited. Awesome. That's awesome. It's, it's, it's really a, a, a neat store, a destination store. We've got all kinds of cool displays and all the products, and you know we'll be doing classes, cooking classes, and all kinds of oh, things. That's gonna be uh, fun. So yeah. we're super excited. So if you're in the, in the Houston area, be sure to stop, uh, stop by, and we'll, uh, we'll have more information on the website and the location. It's on La Santera uh, Shopping Plaza in uh, in Katy, Texas, but we'll we'll have that information on the website. Man, I, I don't know. This I, is... I, I think it's such a great testament to the guys who started Fire Disc to have them see see a you know a success and see an actually a brick and mortar store come yeah, alive. Yeah, and, and you know it's, I, I you know having gotten to meet the guys couldn't happen to better people. Yeah, they they're... deserve it. And, uh, you know, and, and I think the people in Texas are. Well, I can hardly wait till we get one here in Florida. Well, oh, yeah. I can I can tell you, I know they wish they were here tasting this. Because... <laughs> I do, you know. <laughs> For sure. I, I saw them drooling through our steak competition. By the way. <laughs> That's yeah. right. I'm still getting at them. That's though. right. That's <laughs> right. That was awesome. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in, Chef Jason, Chef Brandon. Can't again, can't thank you guys enough. 
and be sure to tune in next month we're gonna do some holiday recipes it'll be right before Christmas and uh, man it's or not no not not before Christmas but it'll be before Thanksgiving excuse me and uh, we're gonna do some awesome awesome things next month so again thank you so much we'll see you next month on fired up Friday Take it easy. Take it easy. <laughs>